It begins over 200 miles above Earth, silent, weightless, and traveling faster than a bullet. But returning home, that's where the real challenge begins. This is the untold science behind one of the most daring maneuvers in human spaceflight, landing the space shuttle. A high-stakes ballet of heat, speed, and precision where there's no engine, no second chance, just physics, control, and courage. Let's break down the science, the engineering, and the legacy of the shuttle's final journey from orbit to wheel stop. From the silence of space to the roar of Earth's atmosphere, landing a space shuttle is a masterclass in physics. As the shuttle begins its descent, it's not just falling, it's dancing with the forces of gravity, drag, and lift. Orbiting at nearly 17,500 miles per hour, the shuttle must carefully flip from belly down to a nose-high orientation, exposing its heat-resistant underside to the sky below. This orientation isn't just for show, it's survival. The shuttle's shape generates lift, allowing it to glide through the upper layers of the atmosphere rather than plummet like a stone. But there's a cost, atmospheric friction. The blazing heat generated from this interaction can reach over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt steel. Enter the thermal protection system, a technological masterpiece of silica tiles and reinforced carbon-carbon panels. These materials don't just resist heat, they absorb and deflect it, protecting the crew cabin and delicate systems from incineration. Without it, a safe return would be impossible. The next phase is as dramatic as it is dangerous. As the shuttle screams through the sky, a halo of plasma surrounds it, caused by superheated air molecules violently compressed in its path. Communication blackouts are common here. Radio signals struggle to pierce the ionized veil. But this isn't just about heat, it's about control. The shuttle doesn't have engines firing during re-entry. Instead, it relies entirely on its aerodynamic surfaces, flaps, rudders, and elevons to steer through the air. Every movement, every adjustment is a delicate correction in a high-speed glide from the edge of space. This phase, called the hypersonic glide, is one of the most unique aspects of the shuttle's design. Unlike a capsule that parachutes, the shuttle soars. It covers thousands of miles, slowing dramatically without thrust, aiming for a narrow landing strip back on Earth. There's no second chance, no go around. As the shuttle descends further, speeds drop from hypersonic to subsonic. Still moving faster than a bullet, the orbiter follows a steep glide slope, seven times steeper than a commercial airliner's. The final approach is silent, unpowered and irreversible. The commander now piloting what's essentially a brick with wings makes split-second corrections. Unlike jets, there are no engines to throttle up for a missed approach. Landing gear deploys just seconds before touchdown. Any earlier, and the heat could damage it. Touchdown is fast, around 215 to 225 miles per hour. The landing gear, built with NASA's shock absorption technology, absorbs the impact, while drag chutes deploy to slow the orbiter. From orbit to wheel stop, it's a ballet of physics, engineering, and human focus. Behind every shuttle mission were decades of innovation. The space shuttle wasn't just a spacecraft, it was the world's first reusable orbital vehicle. It combined the power of rocketry with the control of an aircraft, capable of launching like a rocket and landing like a plane. Its heat shield, consisting of more than 21,000 hand-laid tiles, was a marvel of materials science. Its fly-by-wire system, developed long before commercial jets adopted it, enabled astronauts to command the vehicle with pinpoint precision. Visionaries like Maxime Faggot, George Mueller, and Chris Kraft, alongside thousands of engineers at NASA and contractor teams, turned an ambitious idea into a functioning spacecraft. Their innovations continue to echo in today's aerospace systems. Across 135 missions, the Space Shuttle program built the International Space Station, deployed Hubble, and inspired generations. It carried over 350 astronauts into space, including the first American woman, the first African American, 
and international crew members from across the globe. One minute to but the program also bore profound tragedy. The Challenger disaster in 1986 and Columbia in 2003 underscored the inherent the risks of spaceflight and the cost of complacency. Each loss reshaped NASA's approach to safety, design, and culture. Yet through these lessons, the shuttle's legacy endures. It demonstrated that space access could be partially reusable, that long-duration missions were possible, and that international collaboration was essential. Today's Artemis missions, commercial crew programs, and future space planes all carry DNA inherited from the shuttle. From the fiery edge of re-entry to the silent precision of touchdown, the space shuttle wasn't just a machine. It was a symbol of human ambition, courage, and ingenuity. It pushed the boundaries of what was possible again and again. And though its final mission has flown, its legacy continues to glide through the DNA of every spacecraft that follows. As we stand on the shoulders of shuttle-era pioneers, we're reminded, space isn't just a destination, it's a proving ground for the future. Thanks for watching. For more untold stories and epic journeys beyond Earth, subscribe to Beyond Earth Buckle Up and keep exploring with us. Next up, dive into the untold story of early rocketry, a journey that began long before liftoff.